And now, the mythology of cinnamon. Mm, yeah. Cinnamon's ruling planet is the sun, and it's closely associated with the element of fire. Woo! Speaking of hot! Cinnamon and sex. I say sex because while many other herbs are meant to attract love and marriage, cinnamon is meant to attract some good boom, boom, boom in the bedroom. Which kind of makes sense, as cinnamon is said to cloud one's understanding while encouraging your instincts to give in to passion. And that's just the start. Cinnamon is used in some rituals and spells to help improve your sexual potency, help with premature ejaculation, and all those men who have trouble uh, putting up tents. And this isn't a new thing either, as there's records of gypsies using cinnamon for lust and love spells since the Middle Ages. One particular Arabian recipe from 1394 talks about how cinnamon can increase sexual desire when boiled with onion, ginger, cardamom, and green peas. The Japanese cook cinnamon with sugar and rice in order to help a man become more skillful under the sheets. And women, if you want to attract a little nookie, just dab a little cinnamon oil behind your ears. As this is meant to attract sexual partners to, uh, nibble. Wherever you may want them to nibble. But if all you're looking for is a little bit of boring old love, adding a few extra sprinkles of cinnamon to your meal is meant to bring love and success. Or if you're really gung-ho, there's a complicated spell involving a triangle of different colored candles, some praying, burning rue, some cinnamon, and a photograph of the person you love. Then you shove them all into an envelope and tie it with a red thread. Sounds uh, simple enough to me. Let's get started! Other magical properties of cinnamon. Are your spells just coming out a little bit flat? Then break out some cinnamon, as it's considered one of the best cosmic boosters for any spell you might be casting. And it works twofold, as cinnamon is supposed to bring a little strength and courage to help you make changes in your life. Overall, cinnamon's best known for its ability to protect you and keep you healthy. There are rituals to cleanse your aura, fight persnickety evil spirits, and attract good health. You can tie a bundle of cinnamon with black or red ribbon and hang it in your hallway for protection, love, and overall household success. Toss it in a bath with parsley and rosemary to give you that mellow vibe and cleanse any ugly, gloopy, negative energy out of your aura. Who wants some money? Who doesn't? A popular ritual involves boiling cinnamon with orange peel and a liter of water. Let it cool? Fill a spray bottle and sprinkle the branches of a money plant or some rosemary and basil. But that's not it. It's not that easy to get the green. Next, light a green candle in your living room or kitchen. Then spray the mixture around your room. While calling for the arrival of a little extra abundance in your life. It smells good in here now. It's also said that this ritual is best done after 6 p.m. on Tuesday or Thursdays. Um, why? Because of traffic? Sheesh, who cares as long as it works? Now, if this is all just too much for you and you just want some quick cash, then you can make a bowl out of cinnamon clay, write the amount of money you need on a piece of paper, then place it in the bowl with a few coins and a couple other positive offerings. That doesn't sound much quicker than the other method. Can I just buy the bowl if I suck at pottery? Mm, doesn't say the bowl has to look good. Let's bring on the kiln! Cinnamon and religion. There are several different passages in the Bible involving cinnamon, most of them involving Moses. One is in Proverbs 7.17, where it talks about a lady who sprinkles her bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Moses makes very important use of cinnamon, as it's a key ingredient in his holy anointing oil. He also uses it as a token of friendship. In Exodus 30.23, God tells Moses to use sweet cinnamon and cassia. See, even God is picky about the difference between true cinnamon and other cinnamons. God then tells him to use it in his super duper anointing oil that he uses on the tent of meeting, ark of testimony, Aaron and his sons, and other holy objects. But then God gets hardcore and says that if anyone else tries to make an oil like this one, they're cut off from the Jews. Like completely, forever. God don't play around. Cinnamon and the gods. We move forward to the Greeks, where cinnamon is considered a sacred plant of Dionysus, god of wine. Very smart, obviously another discerning food and drink lover. The Greeks also used cinnamon as a gift to Apollo at the temple of Miletus. 
At one time, there was even a doctrine for cinnamon growers to set aside a portion of their harvest to be taken up by Apollo. Cinnamon bark also decorated the temples of peace in ancient Rome. Romans also burnt cinnamon incense to help focus the mind and increase their clairvoyance. Hey, Rome's gonna fall in 476 AD. Get out now before the big crash. Historical myths of cinnamon. And this brings me to one of my favorite myths about cinnamon. See, that's why you always gotta keep watching them. Subscribe, hit the bell, like. <laughs> now this involves a couple of birds, the phoenix and the cinnamon bird. First, there's the phoenix, and this myth is rather simple. Apparently, in order to build the magical fire that would help charbroil the phoenix and enable it to be reborn, the phoenix would gather cinnamon, myrrh, and spikenard, aka lavender, to get this magical fire smoking. Now the other myth I actually mentioned in my video on the history of cinnamon, and it involves the cinnamologus, otherwise known as the cinnamon bird. Now this mythological marvel came about because the people trading cinnamon wanted to keep the value of cinnamon sky high while obscuring where they were actually growing the cinnamon. And this way, nobody could take over their business. So several myths were actually created to throw people off the track. They told people that they fished cinnamon out of the Nile on magical boats that ran solely on human courage, no oars required. Another story they told people was that cinnamon was found in treacherous valleys, guarded by humongous winged serpents. But the myth that caught on the most was that of the cinnamon bird, and how it collected cinnamon from a mysterious, unknown land. Upstate New York? And the cinnamologus would use cinnamon to make its nest. And these wily birds kept their nests on cliff sides where no man could reach. So in order to get the cinnamon, men would place hunks of meat underneath the nest and hope that the cinnamon bird would come down for a little snack. Now once the bird left its nest, they'd either use lead-weighted arrows to knock the nest down or wait until the bird returned to its nest with the meat. When it did, the weight of the meat would be too much and the nest would fall to the ground, allowing men to scoop up all of the precious cinnamon. Wow, and that story actually worked. You bet your sweet Bippy it did really well. Because of these stories, the Arab traders kept people from discovering the source of cinnamon for almost 1,000 years. Whoa, tell the truth. Have you found that cinnamon brings a little extra pep to your sex life? Go ahead and let me know in the comment section down below. If you want to learn more amazing myths about herbs, then watch the mythology of lavender or the mythology of rosemary next. Please be kind, take care of each other and grab a little extra cinnamon for some good lovin', money, or any kind of protection you may need.